At the end of uh, Barterman's new book, Jesus Interrupted, he does uh, an amazing and rather unexpected thing. After spending hundreds of pages telling us why the Bible cannot be trusted as a guide in the Christian life or as a guide for moral norms or as a guide for much of anything, uh, Ehrman turns around and offers a really unexpected litany of moral claims. At the end of Jesus Interrupted, in fact, throughout the book, Ehrman makes all kinds of moral objections to the New Testament. Objections to the doctrine of hell, how that's morally reprehensible. Objection to Paul's views of women, which he finds morally offensive. Objection to all kinds of other doctrines in the scripture uh, that Ehrman makes very plain that he finds morally wrong. Uh, and throughout this book, uh, Ehrman is often making rather dogmatic claims about the way God ought to be, about the way salvation ought to work, and the way the Bible ought to, ought to look. Um, but what's remarkable is, as the reader approaches the end of Jesus Interrupted, a question begins to enter their mind, and it's simply this. How does Ehrman know and have access to these moral standards that he's appealing to? How does he know that the doctrine of hell in the Bible is morally wrong? How does he know that God ought to be one way and not another? How does he know that Paul's view on anything is morally right or morally wrong? That implies that Bart Ehrman has access to some moral standard in the universe, some moral norm by which he can adjudicate these questions. But the question is, where does this come from in Ehrman's universe? He never bothers to tell us. All he tells us is that he's a happy agnostic. He's not sure of much of anything. But to not be sure of much of anything makes it remarkable to turn around and smuggle in all kinds of moral claims through the back door simply uh, and precisely after telling Christians who are not allowed to make such moral claims on the basis of the Bible. What's remarkable about this is that now you have a person making claims of moral dogmatism on their own private authority. One may not like the fact that Christians make claims that are moral in nature, but at least it's internally coherent why Christians would do so. We actually have a book that we claim is from God and is given by God. If you're going to make moral norms, if you're going to have moral absolutes, it makes sense you get them from God who created the universe. But to say that is not an option, but to turn around and make moral claims anyway based on one's own private authority is really a bizarre thing to watch. And I think that's the problem with Jesus Interrupted. Ehrman spends his own book destroying the very foundation for morals, namely the Bible, but wants to have them anyway. But you can't have your sort of ethical cake and eat it too. You've got to go one way or the other. Either there are moral norms and we have a place to get them from, or there aren't any at all. Now, what if there weren't any at all? What well, would that leave Ehrman's book? And quite a conundrum, because at the end of the book, Ehrman exhorts his readers to work for peace and to work for justice uh, and to uh, do all these things that are supposedly good in the world. But if there are more moral norms and people just do what seems good to them, why make such moral claims at the end of the book at all? What you find here is a little bit of intellectual schizophrenia. At the one point, Ehrman wants to have moral norms because he realizes he can't have a coherent worldview without it. Yet he spends his whole book trying to undercut them by showing how the Bible cannot provide them, but then offers no ability of his own to provide these moral norms. That presents what I think to be a philosophically incoherent book. Um, and even though it sounds good to call for justice and peace, at the end of the day, he has no foundation for those claims. So what that means then is that the problem of evil is not so much a problem for the Christian as it is for a non-Christian, or really for an atheist. Um, and even an agnostic. Often the problem of evil is mentioned to be a problem for believers. How can we believe in a God and also believe uh, that there's suffering in the world? But really the problem is very different than that because even though we not have uh, an explanation for every aspect of that because God hasn't revealed the answer to every aspect of that, one of the things that Christians are able to do is we're able to make distinctions between good and evil in the world. That I can actually know what's good and know what's evil because God has given us a standard by which to judge that by. The problem of evil is actually really a problem for the atheist, or even the agnostic. Because at the same time that he wants to maintain moral norms in the universe, he has no foundation for those moral norms. But it's those moral norms that he uses to object to God. And so he says, I don't like God because God allows evil in the world. But the only way that objection works is if there really is evil in the world. Um, and this is the very trap that Ehrman falls in once again, is that he says, the reason I don't believe in God is because there's evil in the world. But how does Ehrman know good from evil in the first place? The only way that he can actually have an objection against God is if there really are moral absolutes. Then the question is, where do those moral absolutes come from? Ehrman's own worldview doesn't provide them. In fact, Ehrman's own worldview of uh, postmodern agnosticism actually destroys moral norms because it tells us that every view should be equally right.